if I were autistic, I wouldn't be able to react the way that I did and advocate for myself. The audio that you're about to hear in this video was recorded months ago. I wasn't sure when I was going to put these videos out because I just needed a break from content on this subject. I'm thinking, why are the frogs frying? Why are the frogs frying? Why are the frogs flying? First of all, that's my question. Like, never mind the story that you're trying to tell me. Every time she made a note, I noticed. She asked me if her notes were making me nervous, and I told her no. Miss Chef said, I noticed that when she writes, her pen is loud. So if you remember when we left off on this topic, there was a concern with the time they opened. They were open at 9 when I arrived. They asked me to be there at 9 because it was a lot of paperwork. When I finished, it was about 9.30, but there was more paperwork. We'll get to that later because it was indeed when I got to it. The testing starts with showing up objects on cards that I need to draw onto a piece of paper. After I was shown one card, I draw what I saw, flip it over when I'm done, and then she provided me with another card until we completed the stack of cards. I wrote my name on it and was given another piece of paper, drawing them again as many as I can remember. So I spent so much time perfecting my cubes and triangles, I forgot what I had just drawn beside the triangles and cubes. I'm tapping my personal pencil that I brought with me because I didn't want to take the chance that the one they provided had possibly been chewed on by somebody else. I closed my eyes real tight trying to remember the cards and where I drew things on the first sheet of paper. Out of 11, I remember six or seven. I'm asked to answer some word problems. I'm a visual learner, so I'm panicking at this point because all I can remember is my mom standing over me. If Johnny has five apples and buys 15 pieces of gum, what the f does that have to do with anything? I, didn't think. I get the easy ones, but Alex sold 65% less than Mary earning $500. How much did Mary earn? I can't process that in my head, let alone with somebody staring at me and a stopwatch at the same time. Talk about pressure. God damn. We move on to some child's play. Put these foam pieces on top of this outline of those same shapes. Take these blocks and arrange them with the color patterns you see in the picture. Those type of things. Now let's talk about self-harm. You ever did anything like that? What stopped you? Have you tried it again? Hey, yo, easy, doc. That's really how you want to transition? Like, we just gonna go there? This line of questioning was the start of a string of events that led me to a dark place. More on that later after the paperwork we gotta get back to. I answered, but I'm trying to stay as surface as possible because I haven't thought about this shit until she brought it up. We now look at a wordless storybook called Tuesday. Something about frogs that fly on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Or at least that's the story she told. Ain't gonna lie, this part felt like they was trying to play me. But I guess the point was to see if I could follow along with someone telling me a story. I don't know. But from what I saw online after taking the test is that other people were told to describe what they saw. My experience was different because she told me a story and asked me questions while the story went along. I'm thinking, why are the frogs frying? Why are the frogs frying? Why are the frogs flying? First of all, that's my question. Like, never mind the story that you're trying to tell me. Why are these frogs flying? Try to say frogs flying five times fast. It's just hard. Next, she calls out words and I have to describe how they are alike or define it. I confuse pessimist for optimist. And so I said to see the good and the bad situation. And then it's some numbers that I have to repeat back. First forwards, then backwards, and then in order of the smallest first. We stop for a break and resume with me describing what I see in a series of depressing ass pictures like a person on the floor bent over beside a bed with a pew pew by their side. The next one was this younger girl looking like something from Low House on the Prairie. She had this stack of books in her hand and she was walking away from the farm life. Her parents had this look of disappointment on their face. The next one is these two men dressed like spies. One man is whispering into the other man's ear. Then there's one with this man. He's holding a hat over his chest. He's standing at the doorway to some lady's home. He's just giving her some bad news because she's standing at the door with tears on her face. Next, we do a series to finish the sentence. The first one is one word. Mom, 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 mom. We don't have a relationship, so I sit there blank, not knowing what to say. Keeping in mind, this person is not a therapist and is just there to get a snapshot of my life in a four-hour block on a Friday morning. She'll move on to her afternoon appointment while I'll be left to process this for the next few hours or days. I'm given a stack of forms with me selecting the one that best describes how I feel or what answer using different ratings for each type. This part alone took about an hour and I was tired of writing my name in circle and answers. A few of the questions didn't apply, but I was required to select one of the answers just using the lesser of the options, which still was a lie. This next part is going to seem long. I apologize in advance, but again, this is just, if you watch the other videos that are coming out around the same time, all of this will make sense. It'll all connect. After leaving, I get on the subway home and I'm on a practically empty car. At the very next stop, a lady gets on, walks past mad seats, and sits her ass right next to me in the two-seater. I grab my bag and get up, and as I'm walking to another seat, she has this goofy-ass grin on her face. After that four hours of testing, I let out an audible, you passed all those empty seats and you had to sit next to me and you giggling thinking that this shit is just funny. You have no idea how I'm feeling right now or how my day has been so far, and you want to sit next to me, a stranger, and giggle when I move away from your ass like it's a fucking joke? And guess who's being stared at by the other passengers? Not that they thought I was 
in the wrong or had any opinion or even were paying attention to my rant. But a black man yelling at a woman who's not black for doing some recovery that any New Yorker would call out. But you know, angry black man. That's the thing. I removed myself from the situation getting off the train at the next station to change cars. The car I went to happened to have some teens smoking on the fucking train. So I wait for the next one. Laying myself for the pizza I planned to get for lunch on the way home. The next train arrives and it's only three stops to go before I transfer. And now this guy won't stop looking at me all aggressive like. I pull my hoodie up over my head and look straight ahead. He now positions himself to be right in my line of vision. I stand up and walk to the other end of the train car as we approach the next station. Now I'm tempted to just take a cab the rest of the way home because it's been a lot so far. I wait on the uptown A to arrive, but it's delayed already, so the first one arriving is packed. I take the local train instead, and a couple of kids get on two stops later with lunch. Mayo and ketchup with a side of fries. Barf. Gross. No. They sit right next to me, and me hating mayo, I move to the other end of the car. But the smell is strong, and I change cars. I walk from the train home with no issues. I ordered a pizza that was less than ideal for the Friday I had and a waste of carbs on top of that. I return in a month in the afternoon for another four hours of testing. I'm taking a cab back to that appointment. I lied. No cab. I took the same route via a train to my second appointment. I arrived, paid my copay, and I'm whisked away to a room next door to the one I was in the first time. We start with computer tests of me pressing the space bar every time a certain digit shows up for six minutes. At some point I zoned out and I couldn't remember if I got all the ones that came across or was I daydreaming for a portion of that time. There was also some construction going on outside which is also making it difficult for me to focus. She offered to move me to a different room but the masking nature in me declined and said it wasn't a problem. However, I pushed my inner ears further into my ear and she made note of this. Every time she made a note, I noticed. She asked me if her notes were making me nervous, and I told her no. Miss Chef said, I noticed that when she writes, her pen is loud. She then asked if my in-ear monitors amplify the sound in any type of way, or if they're like hearing aid devices. And I explained to her that they're simply custom earbuds that fit in my ear, that won't fit into anybody else's ear, and they're muffling out the sound. So even with these in my ear, her pen writing is loud to me. So we talk some more, which prompts her to ask if sounds have always been an issue for me, and is it loud noises, or do I just have a problem with sounds in general? The tests this go around are less childlike like no made up stories to interpret no images to describe just tons of extended versions of the online assessments i already took they were annoying because the questions repeated but just worded differently playing on my intelligence and pissing me the fuck off i wish i could understand where they were coming from but it just pissed me off that i had to come in person to answer the same questions i swore i answered online <laughs> half of this visit was me in the waiting area doing forms of 200 to 350 questions of the same question worded differently luckily it's the last in-person test the results are either over the phone or in person but after the situation i had with my intake appointment you can watch that video right here but don't go there yet we're not done i mean a little miss caddy in person so it's no delay or drop call and i do plan to record my conversation earlier when i mentioned these questions taking me to a dark place they made me pull up incidents from the past of wishing my timeline was finalized before the time of this recording i was in a decent place and had and thought of these thoughts and i hadn't had these thoughts since february of 23. i understand them wanting to help me get the best diagnosis the first time and that couldn't be further from the fucking truth some people already have their mind made up about you and that's just gonna be what it is but hear me out my first attempt at a professional diagnosis was a nightmare as far as getting the results her notes on me were off more than once referencing family members i never spoke to her or her staff about my first interaction with her was over the phone when she made a diagnosis based on the tone of my voice my second time was in office. She looks me up and down with this stank eye that I'm sure you're familiar with, then tells me to introduce myself to her. This woman had her mind made up, in the words of Kendrick. They not like us. They not like us. To protect her son and those who are high needs. She said in more ways than one that I was brilliant but not a genius and that I didn't appear autistic to her. She said that when she pushed my buttons and I responded with anger, that if I were autistic, I wouldn't be able to react the way that I did and advocate for myself. Excuse me, but off that bitch. Her practice was set up with smaller chairs and play mats and desks that you would find in an elementary setting. Her experience is limited to a certain age group and instead of saying that up front, she accepted the insurance check that she made from it, making me have to pay out of pocket at a facility not in network and not covered because I'd already had the assessment done. Why did I need a third opinion? Because the first one of course being myself and the second one being from this shit. Because if he said the same as the first practitioner, I'd eventually have to accept it. But I knew my own research didn't point to borderline personality disorder because I knew that if I went at it unmasked and froze when I felt overwhelmed or just let anything that I couldn't predict happen as it appeared, I'd be seen for something other than the trauma I have experienced and I'm no longer holding on to. But maybe they can give a trigger warning or do like surgery and ask that you have somebody to accompany you home after the visit. To bring up so much of a person's past by asking questions on things they haven't thought about in years can sit with some of us for a bit longer than just giving out that answer. 
In these instances, having some type of support in place would be helpful. But understanding is genetic, meaning one or both of my parents are also autistic or on the spectrum, but were never diagnosed because for black people in those times, speaking so freely on mental illness wouldn't be treated the same as our white counterparts in the United States and likely dismissed as anything but. Same as today. And though I have no desire to speak with them, today I see my parents as human first having a human experience on earth as people and not superheroes who had it all figured out, thinking how confusing it must have been and still is. If it's one thing I'm learning is that my 40s have been about embracing the unknown and accepting myself as I am while still making improvements to be a better version of the person I was yesterday. I want to thank you for your patience and I hope that I answered your questions in this video. And again, based on the reactions to the first portion of this topic, I'm not sure when these videos will be released or if they ever will be. Your engagement means everything. And if it feels like I'm speaking into a void of a series, then what's the point in continuing, right? Like or give me a thumbs down depending on how you're feeling today. No pressure. And subscribe for the free fries. They're right there in the corner. Pick them up on your way out. Work out. Work out. I broke up with her, it ain't work out.